Do you suffer from skipped heartbeats or a heart rate that sometimes races, seemingly out of control? Well, an occasional skip beat is normal, even for a newborn infant, but if you suffer from chronic irregular heartbeats, then you have an issue that needs to be addressed. Hi, I'm Dr. Fiorite, and today I would like to discuss perhaps my most important topic to date. It's concerning what people group into an umbrella under heart palpitations. But there are many forms of irregular heartbeats or palpitations. There is tachycardia, which is an accelerated heartbeat, bradycardia, which is when the heart rate is too slow, and the most common heart rhythm problems, atrial fibrillation or AFib, which is sudden heart rate increases due to certain factors, and PVCs, which are premature ventricular contractions, which is when the heart beat is slightly out of sync because of an extra beat, and it causes the heart to pause or skip to compensate. Previously, PVCs were thought to be benign and of no consequence, but recent studies have shown that frequent PVCs could lead to heart failure over time. But the good news is that once they are stopped, the heart can return to normal. However, if they are left unchecked, the heart may remodel itself or enlarge, leading to other problems and complications. Atrial fibrillation or AFib can lead to a serious pooling of blood because the heart chambers are quivering when a person is suffering an AFib episode. Now this can lead to serious blood clots and resulting dangers from those. The average heart beats over 115,000 beats per day. And some who have extreme PVC problems have 20 to 40,000 skipped beats per day. Not good not good at all. To compound the problem, scientists do not know what causes the extra beat. In the case of the person who suffers AFib, the prevailing method of treatment is called catheter ablation, where the cardiologist inserts a catheter into the heart and he moves it through the vascular system and pinpoints an area believed to be sending improper electrical signals to trigger the racing heartbeat and he cauterizes the area, forever destroying that tissue and the resulting circuit. Now the problem with ablation and those procedures is that they're sometimes unsuccessful and have to be done several times at a cost of $21,000 per attempt. Again, not good. Then there is the medicine therapy that can go along with it and be an adjunct to it and it can cost upwards of four to $5,000 yearly. Now this is an ongoing treatment and not a cure. Now what if there was a potential cure that did not entail neither drugs nor risky surgery? Now first let's examine some common sense facts. If your heart is functioning properly, you shouldn't even know that you have a heart. So consequently, any disturbance in heart rhythm is problematic. Secondly, there is no conclusive proof that caffeine affects either malady. In fact, the evidence is clear that caffeine is not the cause of irregular heartbeats. Many practitioners insist that the balance of electrolytes is the root cause of irregular heartbeats, yet people who have perfect profiles of calcium, potassium, sodium, and magnesium still have PVCs and suffer from AFib. So what is the answer? As an empiricist, which I am, who looks at simple facts and logic and truths, I arrive at my decisions based on facts and truth and observation. So, having said that, the answer to this problem could be right in your gut. The general population does not realize that the body's immune system resides primarily in the intestinal system. The body's biome is the principal headquarters of positive biotics that keep bad bacteria in check and keep it from overrunning the body. One such bacteria is called Heliocobacter pylori. And I'm gonna shorten that and call it H. pylori. It is present in 50 to 60 percent of the world's population, but if left unchecked, 
It can cause serious stomach and intestinal problems. In fact, it may be the root cause of many people's ulcers. And that's how serious H. pylori is. Now recently they have found that H. pylori is present in most vascular episodes, including arteriosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. When you have an infection such as an abscess tooth and are given an antibiotic such as erythromycin, it can destroy all biotics that are gram positive. Now let me stop to explain this. Bacteria are either gram positive or gram negative and H. pylori is gram negative. So it follows that if you have a two to three week antibiotic regimen and you are taking an antibiotic that is gram positive, you will destroy all of the good flora and keep the bad flora like H. pylori and it will just wipe out all of the good positive flora in the body. So when that happens, you have problems and the problems could be widespread. So well, let's ask this question. How does this affect premature ventricular contractions and AFib and things of that nature? Well, H. pylori is a, is a, a situation where it has a virulent aspect in other words, it can infect areas in the same way that a virus could. Now, left unchecked, H. pylori could infect the heart, including the mitral valves and the system, which ultimately controls heart rhythm, the vagus nerve. H. pylori could become so widespread that not only that it infected the vagus nerve, but the heart muscle, causing cardiomyopathy and and, perio, and a, a problem with the pericardium, which is the outer layer of the heart, which is called pericarditis. Scientists really say that they don't understand or know exactly what's happening with this. They just know that this is an infection of the heart muscle in the terms of cardiomyopathy and is an infection of the outer sac of the heart in pericarditis, but they don't know exactly what the agent is in that. I am offering in this situation that we will discuss and we will come to a conclusion that H. pylori could be the factor, the mitigating factor in all of this. And it could be the root to all of the irregular rhythms and everything like that. Okay, there is no test that you can take to determine whether or not H. pylori has infected the heart's electrical system, but let's just use logic again. It would logically follow that a destructive biome left unchecked in the body can and will do major damage to its host. So, if that's the case, if my theory is correct, and I believe that it is, that H. pylori has just taken over and caused all kinds of electrical problems and structural problems with the heart, so what do we do to combat that? What can we do to stop H. pylori? What we do is we enlist the mortal enemy of H. pylori, which is Lactobacillus ruteri or L. ruteri. L. ruteri has shown in studies to reduce H. pylori by 96% in 14 days. The treatment begins with taking up to 20 billion units of the probiotic, and in that case, more is not better. You don't just overload yourself with it. Like some people have done in the past with probiotics, they would take uh, 400, unit, 400 million units where 20 million units was the proper amount or showed efficacy. So overloading your body with probiotics is not the answer. Just taking the right kind and the right time. Now, probiotics establish a healthy boundary between good and bad biomes. So that's what you will be doing when you take L. ruteri. You will be establishing a good biome against the bad forces of H. pylori and you're reestablishing that and your, your body is acting as, as its own antibody or antibiotic system in that case. Now while you're in the recovery phase and your body is uh, healing using the L. ruteri, 
it's prudent to also take vitamin B1 and coenzyme Q10. Now why that is, is because vitamin B1 prevents a condition which is called wet beriberi of the heart. Now this condition can lead to heart failure. So one of the good uh, effects of H. pylori is that it siphons B1 away from the heart. So you want to reverse that situation by adding B1 back to the heart in the form of vitamin B1. Now, co-enzyme Q10 is also necessary for the heart and it has the greatest concentration of in the body of CoQ10 is in the heart muscle. And frequently people who suffer from heart failure are nearly depleted from CoQ10 so while the body is fighting a possible heart infection by H. pylori, the heart muscle is being provided raw materials to heal and strengthen. Now, during this time, it would be prudent to avoid antibiotics, as the name antibiotic literally means against life. So what we want to do is we want to strengthen our biome and not destroy it. So if you can avoid antibiotics in this phase, then by all means do so. I'm Dr. Fiorite, and while this is not to suggest that no one needs drugs or ablation procedures, rather that the solution may lie in treating the cause of PVCs and AFib rather than their symptoms. And I hope this information is helpful to someone suffering from irregular heartbeats. And just know that I am always working to help you feel right. Thanks for watching, and as usual, have a great day.